ahead of myself there, Fred. Sure? Yep. Call to order. Can we stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. We got uh, Chairman Jay Pankowski. Here. Vice Chair Renee Wells. Present. Present. Commissioner Eric Martin. Here. Commissioner Mark Sterrett. Here. Commissioner Fred Meyer. Here. And I'm Adam Bocanegra, Executive Secretary. No, Eric no. Is, yeah, no, Eric. Fred's mimicking Eric. <laughs> okay. Verification of agenda posting. The agenda for the Airport Advisory Commission of the City of Hollister meeting of January 26, 2022, posted on the bulletin board at City Hall on January 19th at 10 a.m. per government code section 54954-2. Consent approve minutes of the Airport Advisory Commission meeting on October 27th, 2021. I have a comment. There was two items on that that were supposed to be added to this agenda tonight items. The uh, removal of old buildings and the uh, through the fence items. They were G and H. And I was going to bring up the uh, removal of old buildings. I have some comments they'll bring up under old business, if that's okay. We can add that in public input? No, it would be uh, under old business. Okay. I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve the meeting minutes of uh, the Airport Advisory Commission meeting of October 27th, 2021. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Eric is now present. He's just 
approved the minutes for the October meeting. Well, I didn't have to anything. <laughs> Okay, uh, move on to public input. Anybody else here? Uh, nobody in there? We'll move on to reports. Okay, on the A uh, sign up date, we have, um, we sent out the applications. Uh, it was last, I believe last year. We have, so right now on the signs we have three, three tenants that want to have signs up on the sign itself. Uh, one tenant wants two signs, or two tenants want two signs each, and one tenant wants one sign. And I guess for that, what we have is uh, 250 per sign, and there will be a hundred dollar annual fee for the sign to put up there. And then a hundred dollars per year to have the sign up, and 250 per sign just to get the sign. So are all the signs the same amount? Does it matter how they're listed on the? Yeah, so we kind of went, they went with first come, first serve. And we gave them an amount of time and they, the ones that responded first obviously wanted it the most. And so we made it fair, and gave everybody the same opportunity and it came up first come, first serve. So we're, I guess at this point we're waiting for tenant and the sign to confirm exactly what, what they want on their sign. And then once the sign guy gets all that cleared, then he's gonna start printing them out. And the tenants that want two signs, do they pay uh, $200 a year or only $100 a year? Um, I believe it's 100. They're paying for the sign and then the one spot, $100 a year to be up on the wing. And I can clarify that with the office as well. So are the ones that want two signs, one on each side? Yes. Okay. It seems like they should pay more a year if they have a sign on each side, but. Have two, okay. It could be, that could be the case as well. I'm just not. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I can find that out for you though, for sure. Is it prorated pro if you come in mid-year and say you want to put a sign, or is it? I think it's a year, just annual, so the date that it gets on put when on. Based on they put the sign? Yes, and it gets put on. Okay. So Thank if somebody you. got added, it would be a year from then. Thank you. You're welcome. Could we also get a copy of the policy and application so we can see? I uh, gave you a copy of the application with the packet. Oh, sorry, I didn't see that. It should be after the minutes, I believe. Did you have one in there? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, it looks like it says it's two fifty per sign. Right, and then they, every year it's a renewal fee for a hundred, so I think that it could be more if you had a sign on each side. Yeah, I would assume that this, the way this is written is showing, yeah, per Well, sign. it does say quantity, yeah, it does say quantity up on top, too, so it could be two quantity at 100 per year. Fred, do you have a copy of the advertising agreement for the signs? No, I don't, but that's no problem. I can get one later. Okay. Okay. 
I just have one more question about the sign. Is it only for businesses at the airport? Yes. Thank you. Unless they can't sell the space. <laughs> <laughs> Anything goes. <laughs> Renee's, Renee's uh, brewery. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Doesn't quite work at the airport. <laughs> All right. So um, move on to item B. Yep. Uh, open house fly in 110th anniversary. I don't have any new updates on that, but we did get the email from Renee. Um, so you are going to be part of that? Uh, yes, I've, I've joined with the Hollister 150 committee um, to hopefully uh, develop a weekend event for Hollister Airport for celebrating uh, around the same time the uh, 110th anniversary for the airport. Um, I'm looking at a fly-in, um, you know, a, a um, antique boot, you know, an antique aircraft display, um, static display, uh, uh, inviting the 99s and some other organizations to be involved, like from San Martin uh, and um, Reed Hillview. Um, so I'm trying to set up a committee. I haven't sent anything to you guys. I sent it to the airport staff just saying that the Hollister Airmen's Association, the Experimental Aircraft Association Chapter 1264, um, would I would like everyone to have input and be involved, uh, not just me and, and Ruth and the airport. <laughs> So uh, I was trying to set up a committee. I wanted to check with the airport to see what it works best for them. Um, and then I'll send out a note about when we can possibly meet. Um, the 150th anniversary is a little bit bigger. So it involves like four, I think four weekends of events for uh, different activities downtown and at Bellotto Park. and. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that the airport got included in that and we might have a car display, motorcycles, something at the airport. Um, uh, but I'd like everyone's input. So if anyone wants to be involved in the committee, I'll, I'll write your name down and make sure you get an email about it. It'll be in August. The first event is, starts on the 4th of July, I think, with the fireworks, uh, which will probably be at the airport where we can't really have a fly-in and do other stuff at the airport that weekend. So um, it's probably going to be at the end of the rest of the events that will start in August. And so it might be the last weekend. I think there's five weekends. I want to get a hold of the Sal Verdino. Um, he has some friends, Erickson Air Collection, up in Oregon, Montrose, Oregon. They bring down like a Corsair and oh. like a bunch of Warbirds, and Sal um, usually pays for it. So it doesn't cost the airport anything. I can't hear you. I'm sorry, Fred. I told her to get a hold of Sal Rubino, because Sal gets the uh, Erickson Aircraft Collection with Jimmy Martinelli and Sal pays for it, and it doesn't cost anything to the airport, so why not give it a go? You know, he'll bring down a Corsair, a Bearcat, uh, a Mustang, um, maybe a P-38, something, you know. They'll bring four or five airplanes down, so if the airport doesn't have to pay, those planes would be a big draw. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Thank you. He does it for the 4th of July anyway, so I don't see why he wouldn't do it for this. I'll ask him. Thank you very much for that. If anybody else thinks of anything else, just uh, send me an email or text me and I'll uh, add it to my list.
So we have the update actually on the anniversary. The first flight it was from Turner Field on April 14th in 1912. On to Section C. Cal Fire ground lease update. So actually we have uh, some contact with them now. Finally, uh, we got an email that sent um, now from Cal Fire and they said, now we've discussed a long-term lease alternative with Cal Fire Management and Department of Finance. Staff will move forward with submitting a, a service request to the Department of General Services to assist with the lease transaction as they have authority to enter into a lease agreement on behalf of the state of Cal Fire. So once that, um, it says once the officer to this project is assigned, we'll coordinate and kick off with all stakeholders and team members to discuss the scope, schedule, terms, and responsibilities. So finally something moving on that. <laughs> so they're going forward with the lease, the property that they have already a lease on, but haven't broken ground. Right? Yes, yeah, so a lease alternative to the one they had. So, yes. Is that... And we don't have details on that. This is just the first yeah, of but getting Because they were talking, they want to be through the fence, correct? I don't know on that one. So I think that's part of all the details that are coming in with it. They just want to work in with that lease, and they may be in that. I'm not sure of that yet. Yeah, I'd like to see a little pressure put on this because nobody ever gets a lease without having to put up some money up front for that, right? And they've had that lease for, what, 30 years? It's been quite a while, yes. And I don't even know if that's really legal because there's no compensation ever been given for... A, 30-year um, right to a lease, right? Sure. Um, in addition to that, that property that where they, they're planning on putting the, the new helicopter, are, are they leasing that ground? I'm not sure of that one. Can we I can find, find that out? out? Sure. Because I, you know, that's, that's a equivalent to about four or five, <laughs> four or five uh, tie-downs at least, or a hangar space, but yeah. Would the, can you also find out if the fire department is going to relocate where Cal Fire is right now? The fire department? Okay. Or if that land is going to be available for something else. Or if Cal Fire is going to keep both. I would okay. think they wouldn't. Um, but I'm just curious. Okay, I'll get more details on that. On to Section D. Uh, Rubino, from what we're hearing, it will be complete in a month, within a month now. So now we're getting something else going there, too. So that will be up in a month. Um, the ENDS hangar does have a new tenant. We don't know any details of it, but we know there's a tenant for the ENDS hangar. And this eventual tenant would have to access through the fence, is that correct? They're currently the fence is staying up. That's all I know as far yeah. as on our end of it. So and I, and I don't understand that because the only person that could um, improve that access would be to the the FAA through a grant or something like that. Is that my guessing? So we need to have that fence secure, and it can't be just a open access no, at any I, point. I think the fence, uh, the current road there is right next to the fence. I think, isn't it? I'm not positive on that the entrance to that hangar yeah that's pretty far it's I mean, it? it's a good distance yeah there's a lot of land in there from but that. but that road there is not uh con wouldn't be considered a taxiway no not the road to there right. no it's my understanding that it's the fa would not pay for that and you could not obtain a grant that the ten, uh the owner of the property would have to and or the tenant would have to bear the cost of taxiway um, repairs or I'm in, sorry to put the taxiway in you mean up to the yeah because so, it's not an improvement for the airport no, so the yeah, FAA will not. not cover it 
Um, that's my understanding. So that's what we know now is there is a tenant. But that They're is not a, in there yet, but there's a tenant. We don't know. That is a further. through the fence um, hanger. The FAA has signed off on a through the fence agreement a few years back. It was quite a bit of uh, arbitration about it, but I think it's the responsibility of the uh, the owner that would pay for the uh, fence, the cost of the fence and stuff like that. But the through the fence, uh, that's already been approved. I don't think Bob has would have built the hangar if he didn't have approval of through the fence. Right, there is approval. Uh, I've been working with the city and the airport on that. Um, right now it's just a permit that the FAA has to approve and the permits between the city um, and the tenant um, and the FAA has to sign off on it to say this tenant can have a through the fence arrangement with the airport that doesn't conflict with any grant for the from the FAA. As soon as that's approved, it should be shortly that uh, it will continue to be the permit per through the fence uh, upcoming projects. Have they specified where they would access through the fence itself? In other words, would they do a taxiway on their property and then at some point tie into the kilo, I guess it is, over there? There isn't any um, information about that in the permit. move on to section E. Airport manager update. I have no further um, information on that. There, the applications did go out or the, the job went out and the applications were through. I don't know if they're doing interviews or we don't know of anything yet. So is there an uh, Right now it's as a committee. We're trying to all do it together. We're doing the best we can as a committee to, to keep it. Uh -huh. Stu Walker, and uh, he couldn't find anybody. He couldn't get a hold of anybody. He couldn't. I told him I gave him your name, and I gave him Liz Castillo's name. Yeah, so we we can take care of most of it, anything that they can call on. So, okay. and I'm I'm have the phone twenty four seven on me. So if they call me, I, I'll answer, right. and I'll get them an answer if I don't have it. Is the application period over? I believe so. Yes, it okay. ended in December. Uh, section F, runway maintenance status. Oh, uh, uh, going back to the can airport I manager. Uh, can I back step for just a second, please? Sure. Yep. Um, I had asked the city council is if, if the airport commission, if he could kind of kept in the loop uh, in regards to uh, picking a new airport manager, mainly because it's such a unique business that most people don't have the knowledge and stuff that I think that the airport commission can bring to the table. Uh, I don't know, maybe if, in, the, in the conversations, maybe you can ask that again, if there's any way we can somewhat be involved with the interview process. Okay, I'll see what I, I can I was that. actually just going to mention that. I spoke to Brett and um, indicated the same thing. Yeah. And he said that was his plan, is to have Good. a couple of us on the interview process. Yeah, I think the commission should at least uh, maybe look at the applications for the uh, for the applicants and just take a look at them if they have any comments and put them for the city council. So the applications, I believe we gave them to you in a packet in November. No, it was no. we. I think it was when it came out. I brought it, and I don't know if I. I think he's talking about the we got the job description that yeah. was posted. Oh, the job description, yes, yeah. That's what I gave he's you. Sorry about, about that. Sorry about that. Yeah. App Applica oh, application list, applicant list. Okay. Oh, applicant resume, probably. Sure. No, actually, what I meant was to look at the resumes of the applicants. That's okay. what I meant. Correct, yep. Yeah. We want to see the resumes. 
I agree, Fred. move on to the runway maintenance status now so the runway maintenance we wanted to do run runway or the taxiway so last the last meeting we were talking taxiway and so we did runway maintenance we did a crack ceiling so we've had the crack ceiling machine from the streets department at our at the airport mm -hmm. and being that we only have a two-person crew when we get a chance, it takes two hours for the machine to heat up, we'll jump out and get on it as much as we can. But there's a lot more to do at the airport, yeah. obviously, with two people. So we've been jumping around here and there. Um, we've got between the hangars on the west side. We've got some of the runway, some of the taxiway. Um, in the meantime, repairing lights, replacing lights, obviously. There's a lot of stuff to do, but we are getting on it. So well, as long as we have the machine there and we can get it there, we'll, we'll get okay. on it. Uh, what were you guys doing about a week ago uh, down there on the end of 3-1? On the end of 3-1? No, right yeah, the where the time you guys had out. Oh, with the notums? Thresholds. Uh, we put in the taxiway lights back. Okay. So the the lead-in taxiway, somebody, Alpha. Somebody bumped into them? Or? No, they were taken out oh. from the last project, okay. and they were okay to put back in. So we there were only temporary reflectors there. Oh. We, so we added the lighting back, so they had to rewire, add um, lights back in there. Okay. So section uh, G, airport sign on San Felipe Road. So the only thing we found, we don't have any pictures or record of the actual sign itself, what it looked like, what they would like it to look like. So we can get either one made, make it ourselves within the street department or have it outsourced. But we're looking for somebody that maybe has a picture of it. Um, I called the streets department. They're looking on record to see if they have anything listed as well. But as far as of yet, no, we don't have anything, any signs for that. There is one there, but it's a real small one. Um, southbound coming from the highway, so it's a very small one. I don't think it's the same one they were speaking of last time. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, moving on to old business. Actually, Fred, do you want to bring up the two items that were not on the agenda? Yes, the, uh, there was two items that they were supposed to be added to the agenda tonight, and they were One of them was the uh, removal of the old buildings and the electrical panel. The, uh, as you know, the, uh, the RV park is, is for the sole use of uh, Elks members. And right now, I think, as far as I know, over the years, the, uh, the airport has the airport budget has supplied electrical power for that RV park. So I think now would be a good time when they're going to change it over to possibly see if they can uh, remedy the situation and connect it to the Elks Club. The electric itself, you're saying? Fred? Yes, as far as I know, that building 14, that's, that's, uh, that panel's on airport property. Yes. And they've been tapping off that power forever and a day. And uh, now that the, I guess the building, they have to, they say they have to move the, the, the panel and the pole or whatever else. And that would be a good time to look into uh, where uh, the Elks Club RV parking area is getting its power from. So currently it's on the um, fenced area past building 14. It's on its own meter. Oh, it is for the Elks Club? The Elks, the RV parking? Yes. Yes. I wasn't aware of that. It's on the fenced area right past building 14. I see. So then the, the power is metered directly to the Elks Club now. Is that correct? Currently it is, yeah. And there's another meter for building 14 next to it. We will have to disconnect them for a while to supply them direct with that meter. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome.
So what is the status of the removal of those old buildings? Um, that, as far as we went, that's what they wanted from us, the information and what they had in there. We went through all, we had the um, asbestos and um, the abatement go through there. Um, I think lead, they did the lead testing. They did all that. Everything that is done from our end need, needed to be done is done. We're waiting for, because there's, I guess there's more buildings within the city that are going to be connected with that somehow, I believe. I'm not sure of the exact, I can try to find that out from maybe the city manager. Could you find out if they're taking advantage of the Brownsfield grants that are available from the EPA? I think, did we speak of that last time we missed the deadline or something? There's, it's an ongoing okay. grant. Okay, oh, I'll ask them. And there are other places in Hollister or San Benito County that are taking advantage of that, like out by the landfill okay. to remove. I've talked to the city about it, but it would be unfortunate to not use those funds to do that. Right now, is the funding supposed to come out of the airport budget to remove those buildings? Am I correct? I don't believe so, but I would have to find that out for sure. Yeah, because that can be an enormous amount of money for that, uh, the asbestos problem. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Now, the people have done the studies on this. Did they also quote prices to remove the... I think you have to get more than the three quotes, I believe, or it's three quotes that we have to get for removal of it. Almost any project we do have to get three yeah, quotes but on mean, anything. But I thought you said you already had somebody do the analysis the, on it. The so testing, yes. The testing, but they don't quote prices. Uh, I, I think once you get the results back, then they'll... If you request that, then they do that. Same company? You can be. Yeah. I think some I, of the, within saying, the company. Normally what I've seen is they come in, they test it, and then they assess what it's going to cost to remove it. For them, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think, and that's going to be, a, I would think, a bigger issue than actually the demo once the, that stuff's removed. Once the that's removed, yeah. The demo would probably simple. be, sure. So you have a hygienist that came out, did the testing. Yes. Is he also providing a quote? I believe he already did. I, I'm not mediation. positive. Yes. As well. Yes. And then you have two other companies that are going off the same hygienist scope of work. Right? No, I believe they were different, but I'm not sure. I will get the. I can get those for you. The well, information for you. Because okay. you don't really. A lot of experience in this kind of thing. And, yes. Uh, you need a scope of work. Sure. In order for them to bid off of, so that it's all apples to apples. Yes. If you have three hygienists and three hygienists come up with three different things and three different scopes, there's going to be price fluctuations all over the board. You need one scope of work by one hygienist and let everybody bid off that. Okay. And that way you're going to get apples to apples and you're going to, everybody's bidding off the same thing. You get three hygienists or three different companies that have hygienists, you're going to be all over the map. You know, one guy's going to go full tilt, another guy's going to not go very far and want to change order you. You know, there's a million ways around it, so make sure you have uh, apples to apples on it. Yeah, the bid's no better than the specifications of it. That's, yeah. that's you got to have. you got to have the same specs, the same scope of work for each contractor, otherwise your bids are, are going to be skewed. You got a time frame for that? coming about for the building the, the removal bidding, the bid, yeah. um no I, I don't uh, offhand i can get that for you for the next time the good thing about the Brownsville grants are um is that they also help you replace those buildings and update your airport so they cover that cost too so it's well worth um, especially there's infrastructure money specifically for upgrading airports and <laughs> Um, I think we could use that money to do something with these buildings. Do you have a specific contact or anything for Adam to do that? Uh, I think you we can have contact a... me. Okay. Good. The city manager has all the same information. I provided it to him. Okay.
Fred, did you say you had a second item besides the old buildings? The through the fence? Oh, no, the, uh, the other thing was the through, uh, I guess it was through the fence. Yeah, it was through the fence item that was uh, on the October meeting to be added to the agenda, but I think we've already discussed it. Okay. Yes. Uh, I saw a, a confused Adam uh, on this electoral panel that said that the PGA may have to move a poll or do something. Well, what's, with, what's with all that? Well, the weather head goes to the building. So that right now it goes to building 14 and it goes over building 14 to, to the RV parking. So we need to just disconnect it there and re reconnect it. Is, is, is building 14? Um, we're going to actually that can go under. It's already on a panel from the underground. Yeah. So it'll go, it'll stay underground. Yeah. But we just detach it because the panel currently is on the side of building 14. Yeah. So it's like a sub panel there. Yeah. And it's got the yes. Well. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it just supplies to the sub panel, but underground. So building 14 is. You're muted, Fred. Can't hear you, Fred. Oh, I say building 14. That's that building that we used to store a lot of uh, airport air show stuff in. Is that the building we're talking about? Mm, building 14 is a shorter one, not the one, the big one in the center. Yes. That's still existing. Okay, no problem. Um, okay, any new business? I can't hear you. Got to turn your mic on. How about now, Fred? You got Excuse me. You got to turn. You got to turn. You got me, on. Fred. You got me. <laughs> yes, you got me, you have to, Fred. Come in, Fred. You have, you have Fred. to turn your mic on for me to hear you. <laughs> okay, okay, Fred. I got you. Hey, uh, um, who's going to be a good point of contact for people looking for information on the airport? Uh, depends on for what. So we kind of, you can, I can Are direct them to anyone. Are you funneling towards Liz or what are you doing? I can direct it to anyone. So if they call me, I'm usually on site. I'm okay. there. Um, so you or Liz? Yes, definitely. More or less? Yes. And okay. we can get a hold of any one of us so I can direct. If I can answer it, I can get them to who can. Okay. Has uh, Amazon been doing anything out there yet? I haven't seen anything. Can't wait for that to happen. I don't think it's a coincidence they built a major frickin' distribution center right next to the airport. You don't think that's a coincidence? No, I do not. <laughs> no, I do not. I think it's a business plan. Yeah. They've done it elsewhere too. And this so is distribution center going yeah. for furniture on the other side. Well, they got all sorts of vehicles. I mean all sorts of trucks, all sorts of vans all over the place. The new distribution center is going to be even bigger. Oh, fantastic. It's not Amazon. Oh, which one is this? Uh? The new one. Oh, nice. It's uh, furniture and appliances distribution. It's going to be... Like a fulfillment? Twice the size of Amazon at the end of... Off the east side of 31. Yeah. The east side of 31. Oh, yeah. Up here. Oh, right there? Yes. That's funny. Look on San Benito Link. Benito Link, and you'll see the whole thing about it. Yeah. Um, they really can't do anything until they pay us off. Until what? That guy was used to, my father and I in Cubicle, and another guy owned. Where Swank Farms was, right? Uh, it's in Swank Farm, farther up 156. 
no, no, no. The, the old, old Swank Farms. Oh, I'm not that old. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. That's my fault. Yeah. Um, that's interesting. I need to go to down to the city and see what exactly he has transpired because he doesn't have the title to that property yet. It just came out. Oh, it's on Benito Lincoln? This is when, right? Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, we got to start planning for uh, October. It's three times the size of also. Sorry, we got to start planning for it. Oh. Yeah, there's a little problem about um, I guess we're still the, 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 the title to the property. He hasn't paid us off yet. So. We're still on the TV. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go back to business. Yeah, I don't think anybody's watching. <laughs> this is like put you to sleep stuff. <laughs> Can you hear us, Fred? <laughs> Yes, I don't have a clue what all that was about. <laughs> <laughs> We're hiding things from you. The team was in a huddle. <laughs> yeah, be careful of the brown active guys. <laughs> uh, maybe uh, I could throw this on new business versus uh, items for next agenda. And I don't know if anybody else besides me cares about it, but uh, the way the hanger list operates, if you're on the list, your name comes up, you don't take it, you go to the bottom of the list. And I just wonder if that process could be reconsidered where if your name comes up, you don't take it, you drop down to the next, to the next level, you don't drop down to the, bottom. the bottom. That's the way it used to be. Um, Stay on the list. Yes. It's a year, it's right? A, yeah, it's a year it's on the waiting doing. list. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. But uh, so I don't know if anybody else has a, any opinion on that. If, if we want to bring it up at the next meeting and and see if because uh, I don't think anybody. I don't know how that policy came into effect. And I don't pers personally like it. I think it's a good idea to review it. Yes, it's almost uh, punitive. It's almost punitive. You know, you might be a, two or three months out from making a decision on something, and you're not, you know, ready to, to commit right at that minute. But you don't want to go all the way to the bottom of the list. Or, or at least just give the option. Head it to the agenda for the next meeting. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Do we want to add that to the next agenda? Yeah, Adam, yes. if we can get the policy for how it's how hangers are selected, yeah. how the list works. Okay. Any other items for next agenda? Or any other new business? Oh, we're a new business yeah. too. Yes. Sorry. Uh, if there's no more new business, we can go to items for next agenda. Well, items I'd like to see on next agenda would be number one is Cal Fire paying for those helicopter for the helicopter pad. Uh, and I'd like to, you know, I uh, I wish I had a 30-year option to lease something <laughs> without putting any money up. I like to set start setting some parameters where. Cal Fire's got, got to make some kind of commitment or release that hold that they have. Uh, and does anybody know if they're keeping their existing area and moving across the runway? That I'm not sure of. I can. I was going to get that for the next. Yeah, yeah the, the, kind of the rumor was that Hollister Fire was going to move where they are now. That was, yeah. and that Cal Fire wants to go through the fence. Oh, Hollister Fire is out there by Bob Andrews. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. It's a political thing and a money problem. The funding is the problem, getting the funding to move over to the other side. Well, they want to expand and they can't expand where they are. So they need to make a decision. <laughs> do we, do, could we get a copy 
of that lease that they have that they haven't paid anything on? Of the original? Okay. They have a 30 year option with no money down? The, the original lease? Yeah. Yeah. And if they do uh, abandon that property, is it going to be like an EPA Superfund site or what? <laughs> good, good point. You know, in order for us to release it to somebody else, if they abandon it, you never know. I mean, they've been out there for a long time, and chemicals have done a, come a long way. But back in the 70s... They just had big vats out there, open vats. Yeah, they had that, that settling pond or yeah, that open yeah, pond there. Yeah. You never know what was in that stuff. Could be a EPA deal. So somebody before they skip away from that, somebody needs to yeah. make sure that they know that they're responsible for the cleanup or something. Do you know if at any point that uh, the city attorney's ever reviewed this lease? See I'm not aware of that. It? No, I'm not sure of that. Is there any I way can, we can, I can ask. see if they want to do that? person that's very uh, familiar with these leases is Ken Lindsay and uh, he's the guy that I can probably talk to him and find out what's going on but I know the uh, Cal Fire they like to sit on what they have forever because the, the rent is so low but with all the fires going on and the pressure to put out fires I don't see understand why they're not getting the funding to move over to the other side I just don't get it Say words. What was the word was anyhow? But we should keep it on the agenda for the next meeting. I would think we want to keep the do we want to keep the sign update or not? I guess I'm good. I took care of it. Yeah. Um, I think we keep the open house flying. Yeah. Cal Fire. Um, Do we need more information about Rubino Ranz's hangar? Maybe you can just tell us when they're done. When, uh, okay. Like when, when Rubino's, Rubino's done. Okay. And has got a new tenant, but figure out what he's going to do with the through the fence agreement. And okay. Do it as part of your report. I think we keep the airport manager update. The I like the runway status just to just to hear the improvements that are going sure. around. I don't think we need to keep the airport sign on San Felipe Road. That was a request from a from the public last time. Um, that's not really the airports. That's Caltrans, isn't it? Yes. It's not inside our fence line, so I, yeah. So that's Caltrans. Yeah. It's really not our gate. Yeah. Thanks for looking in for it, into it for the public input. Um, I don't think we need to keep it unless somebody else does. I think we keep the old building um, update yeah. just on the on building fourteen and the power and all that. Okay. Anybody else for items for next agenda? Uh, do you want to discuss the hangar list any further? Uh, yeah, that's under New Jersey. Uh, New Jersey and whatnot. Or how, how in the heck do they do that? And then is Cal Fire paying for that pad out there? Maybe we could get a in-person uh, visit from Fred next uh, meeting. No? Fred. 
We want you to visit us in person, Fred. Are you Say coming to again. a meeting in I person? I didn't need to say it again. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. Fredly, we'd like to see you in person. We won't pick on you. I still, I still can't hear what you're saying. We want to see you in person, Fred. If we don't pick on you, will you visit us in person? Well, I'm concerned about this COVID stuff, you know, at my age. <laughs> But I'll, I'll see if I can make the next meeting in person and bug all you people. Yeah, we'll take you out for a beer later. Hey, uh, <laughs> do they have one of those hazmat suits we can put them in? How about a bubble? A bu <laughs> Fred's bubble. bubble. We're just teasing you, Fred. If there's no more items, do we have action items? All right, next meeting is February 23rd, 2022 at 6 p.m. I will not be here for the next meeting, just a heads up. Sorry. Does her name get to do the gavel? Yeah, yeah she does. I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, can we get a roll call vote since Fred's on Zoom? That's what we've been doing with with the Germans. With it, with all the other meetings, with the German or any any voting, is do a roll call vote. Oh. So you'll just call out each commissioner and have them say aye, yes, no, whatever. Okay. So do we start, we want to start with Jay, with the chairman? Okay. Chairman Jay Pankowski? Okay. Vice Chair Renee Wells? Yes. Commissioner Eric Martin? Yep. Commissioner Mark Sterrett? Yes. Commissioner Fred Meyer? Yes. There we go. Meeting adjourned. Still the best part. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Recording stopped.